Hey guys, today I'm gonna to go over three different strategies for marketing, and it's gonna be in three different industries with kind of like unique circumstances. So the first example I'm gonna talk about is someone who wants to be a bookkeeper for landscapers. And this is based on the story of a bookkeeper who I talked to just last week, and I got really inspired by her story. It also just made me think about how many ways there are to get clients and how many different types of clients there are. And even if there's not like a path forged in in the area that you want to go. If you're creative, you kind of think outside the box, you do your best to problem solve and find solutions for things. Like, I really believe that you're going to be successful. So this bookkeeper that I met with, she speaks Spanish. It was her second language. And actually she married someone who Spanish was their first language. And she knew she wanted to incorporate, you know, Spanish speaking somehow into her bookkeeping practice. And so what she decided was she wanted to be a bookkeeper for landscapers. And it was so inspiring to hear her talking about her heart for these people because in her opinion, landscapers and in this industry, they're not charging enough for their services because they're working many hours and they have equipment costs, but they're not always factoring all of this in. And so one of her goals was to help her clients charge the appropriate amount that would you know, cause their business to be successful. So first of all, right off the bat, this is amazing. She has a language skill she's trying to utilize. She has like a really clear why about what she's doing. So then she started telling me some of the obstacles that she came across when trying to market or trying to get the word out about her bookkeeping business to this group of people. She told me a lot of times they're not using social media. They're not even really emailing that much. They're just using text as a method of communication. And then in many cases, they might not be using like banking to the most that they can. So I think just kind of like a different view on technology as well as banking. Sometimes they're not using like online bill pay or they might not even deposit things in the bank. They might not have a separate business banking account. So she wanted to, you know, work through some of the education for this, let people know all the free stuff they could do within banking. She actually had a meeting after mine with a banker who was gonna help her, you know, learn more about that process. So what she did, which I thought was very ingenious, first of all, she paid a small amount of money to get a list of all the landscape businesses in her area. So I think she focused on like a couple counties, maybe, maybe three different counties, and then you can purchase a list of businesses. I'm not sure exactly where to do that, but I feel like with with a Google search, you can probably figure it out. And then she took each of those businesses and she looked them up on the state business registry website. So there's public records for free of who has what business. And so then from there, she was able to get the addresses. And then also she narrowed it down to people that seemed like they were Spanish speaking. So then she had a list of, I don't know how many people, maybe like a hundred, couple hundred businesses. And from there, she was going to send them all mail, like literally mail in the, in their mailbox. So I think she was going to do a postcard and on there was going to be a QR code where they could sign up for email alerts from her. And I actually recommended, I don't know if she had already thought of this, but, um, of giving away something for free in order to get them to sign up, maybe something like 10 best financial strategies for landscapers. I don't know for me personally, if I got something in the mail, I probably wouldn't scan the QR code and then go sign up from that. I would need some kind of incentive. So she was still kind of completing this process. I can give you guys an update if I check in with her in like six months or so. But I just thought this was such an amazing example of kind of thinking outside the box. Like I wouldn't have picked this or thought of this as my marketing strategy, but it does such a great job of reaching a population that probably needs a bookkeeper, helping her fulfill her why and her passion, and three, kind of meeting people where they are with the technology that they want to use. So that is probably not your exact story that you want to do or that you want to target, but hopefully that inspires you along with these other two I'm going to tell you um, to just be creative. If you're like, dang it, I don't know how I'm gonna contact these people if they don't use email, you know, try to think of a solution. All right, so for the next like little case study, I am going to call this door knocking. I don't know if you watch any of those like trashy real estate shows, but they always talk about door knocking in real estate. So you can go door knocking in bookkeeping as well. So I was just searching Facebook forums for ideas for this and a couple things stuck out. One, be a little bit strategic about who you go and meet. So CPAs are a really good one. If you go and visit all of the CPAs in your county, maybe there's, I don't even know, like 20, 
20 CPAs in my county. Maybe I email them first to set up a meeting, say I want to work together and then go meet with those people. Probably a lot of them are going to say, oh, I'll keep you in mind for later. And some of them actually will keep you in mind for later. <laughs> Working with CPAs has personally got me business and projects. The other thing about door knocking is one, it doesn't requires social media, which is a positive for many people. And you get to know businesses that are in your community. So maybe if you are targeting hairstylists, you want to be a bookkeeper for hairstylists. Maybe you go get your haircut every three months and you keep visiting a different hair salon. And then, you know, you're sitting there for an hour with this person. You naturally start chatting about your life and like what you do. And so that might be a good entry into talking about your bookkeeping business. Maybe as part of your agreement with one of your hairstylists, you put your business card like out by the cash register. This might be a tangent, but I have a friend who's a florist, but every two weeks she makes a new bouquet for the place where she works out and then she gets a discount off of her workout classes. So stuff like this, think of like weird ideas that are outside of the box that can get your name out there as a bookkeeper. All right, and my number three case study is low stakes entry. I did want to mention really quick, I have a class all about getting bookkeeping clients. It's called Bookkeeper Marketing Coach. So it really walks you through the how to of some of these more complex marketing ideas. Also check out my website, finepoints.biz for more resources. And if you want to give this video a subscribe. All right, so back to the low stakes entry. What this means is this girl has an offering that is maybe a couple hundred dollars and it allows her to get clients in the door, but without committing to hiring her forever as a bookkeeper. So she offers a review of their books. So maybe it costs $250. The client gives her access to QuickBooks online, maybe bank statements, a tax return. And then she takes a couple hours and reviews everything and then gives them a report with actionable steps. So this is kind of a win-win for everyone. So for her, she's getting paid for her time and her expertise. The potential client is paying a reasonable amount of money without having to make a huge commitment, but also getting a, a valuable report that they can use and they can implement in their business. And then for the bookkeeper, it's a great way to start a relationship. So even if this person doesn't become a client, maybe they mention you to one of their friends, one of their colleagues. Or maybe the potential client eventually decides to fire their bookkeeper and they're like, oh yeah, I remember I did that really helpful review with that bookkeeper. So my encouragement to you is keep working at it. Even if it seems hard to get clients, try implementing different strategies. So another Facebook post I saw had someone who was trying to contact 100 people per day. And I'm like, that's a lot. I don't know if I would actually do that, but that's an example of someone who's working really hard, setting goals for themselves and you know, hustling to get those clients. Let me know in the comments if you guys have other ideas of creative ways that you got clients. I'd love to hear it.